Tropical rainforests only cover about 6% of the Earth's surface. At the same time, rainforests are some of the most diverse biological habitats in the world. Not all rainforests are tropical, however. In the Olympic Peninsula of northwestern Washington state, we find a temperate rainforest. This is considered a rainforest because it receives at least 68 inches of rain per year. But temperatures here are not tropical. As magical as this forest is, it is not nearly as productive as a rainforest in the tropics. The Earth's tropical zone extends from about 23 degrees north latitude to about 23 degrees south latitude. Rainforests in the tropics are wet hothouses of biological activity. Because temperatures are warm all year long, there is no period of seasonal dormancy to slow things down. Plants here are constantly growing, constantly producing. An acre of Amazon rainforest produces about 75 tons of sugar per year through photosynthesis. Compare that to an acre of forest in the northeastern United States, which only produces about 28 tons of sugar per year. One third as much. The amazing rate at which green plants capture the sun's energy and manufacture food in the tropical rainforest is the key to the tremendous biodiversity we find here. Every living thing is in competition with other forms of life that require the same limited resources. This competition over time has led to vastly greater numbers of species, in other words, greater diversity in nearly everything. The competing trees of the rainforest reach high in order to expose their leaves to the sun, some nearly 200 feet. It takes 40 tons of wood in the trunk and branches of this ficus tree to support one ton of its leaves. A huge investment in matter and energy. But if you were a vine, imagine the advantage of using the support of a tree to get your own leaves into the light without supporting them yourself. That's why vines are so abundant here. Orchids, bromeliads, and other epiphytes have a slightly different solution. Epiphytes are plants that grow on trees, and they don't send their roots down to the soil. They just hang on and take their nutrients from the air. We see the plants, the all-important producers of the rainforest, finding many different ways of solving problems and filling niches while conserving their resources. The result is tremendous biodiversity. Here's a great comparison to illustrate the point. The number of tree species in the entire eastern United States is 253, but in the tropical forests of the Malay Peninsula and Southern Asia, the number is an incredible 3,179. In the highly productive, competitive, and diverse realm of the tropical rainforest, there are six to eight acres of leaf area for every acre of forest. Almost every leaf is shaded by other layers of leaves. As a result, the light energy falling on the forest floor is less than one half of one percent of the light falling on the high canopy of the forest. Plants must be adapted to extremely low light levels in order to survive down here. Therefore, most of the biological activity in the rainforest is high up where we have difficulty seeing it. It is there where leaves and flowers are most abundant that we find the herbivores at work. These are the primary consumers of the forest, playing their part in recycling the nutrients provided by the producers. With so many kinds of roots, leaves, fruits, and seeds available in the rainforest, the result is tremendous diversity in the kinds of herbivores competing for those foods. The greater the quantity and diversity of the foods in the forest, the greater the diversity of its primary and secondary consumers. The effect can be spectacular to those of us from temperate climates. Perhaps no region is more diverse than the rainforests of the Malaysia and the Indonesian archipelago. Here we find not only more species of plants, but also more species of insects, birds, primates, and other kinds of animals than any other part of the world. But the high rainfall in tropical forests has a downside. The soils here are very poor. In fact, this whole system of rainforest life is extremely delicate. 
This is not what we expect of a habitat so spectacular and full of living things. While water is so important to life here, the heavy rainfall also leaches out the precious minerals of the soil and washes them away. Minerals like magnesium, iron, potassium, and copper. The surprising result is that nearly all the important micronutrients essential for plant growth are locked up in the things that are still alive, rather than in the soils. So when a tree dies, it must be recycled quickly. Luckily, the dense network of roots near the surface of the forest floor reabsorbs nearly all the nutrients released during the process of decay. This recycling of critical micronutrients sustains the forest generation after generation. Clear this forest away, and the whole delicate rainforest ecosystem, which has developed over eons of time, is destroyed forever.